welcome to another episode of the Gold Diva Fab Show. On today's episode, I have a very special guest. It is the suit designer, but not just a suit designer, a one that knows what it takes to make the perfect suit. He is going to be stopping by later on to talk to us about the journey so far and how he's managed to make K.A. London a household name. We would also be talking about denim, which is the classic wear on the fashion fab. You do not want to miss all of that, so make sure you stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I am now sitting on the sofa with one of the greatest suit designers of our time. And by greatest, I mean an amazing man who pays attention to detail and knows just exactly what it is to make a classic suit. I'm talking about K.A. London. Ooh. Hi, yeah, welcome Hello. to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank it's you for very good me. to have you here. So how are you doing today? I'm pretty excited. Um, with an introduction like that, I feel like I'm working on water. No, I mean, I have to give, I mean, you, what they say, you have to give the props. We know about your work, we've seen you around, so we just have to say, I mean, that's why we have you on the Fab Show. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, mm. apart from some of the producers <laughs> I paid, guys, I'll double the pay. Yeah, <laughs> apart from them, but yes, I believe it's that's good. the reason okay, why. Okay, yeah. so, all right, so let's take it back to the beginning. Okay. Tell us who Kaya is and um, how he will get started for you. Okay, um, Kaya, um, London is a creative guy, okay. let me say it that way. Um, I came from a media production background, um, I did a broadcast media and public culture um, back at uni, and what that brought out of me is the creativity to it, which is how you can read people, promise I won't read you, okay. um, but it's, it brings in the psychology behind um, camera shots and people, how you build characters. Okay. And I remember moving back to London, I studied in Cardiff, so I moved back to London and said, okay, I have a degree, I'm going to get a job. Okay. And um, there are no jobs. There are no jobs. And okay. um, I looked, and there are no jobs. And it was around the time where Moschino, I'm not trying to say my age, but it was around the time where every kid was wearing a Moschino, 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 I probably was in Bond then, but yeah. I don't like you right now. I'm sorry. Um, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was around that time. And what I noticed was that everyone, um, there was no identity to fashion. Okay. Um, and that just literally moved me to the stage where I wanted to start to define myself, which is, um, I, I know everyone can say this now, but it was the stage where Primark used to make these really, really lovely t-shirts, like tank top t-shirts. Okay. We have the white, the blues, the greys. And then what I started to do is rather than invest money in buying Moschino, 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 Maybe you get an expensive blazer. Around back then, it was your um, Kalkani, or it was your um, Louis V's, or stuff like that. Yeah. Get a nice blazer, get a Primark t shirt, and maybe just get anything pair of jeans. And what I then noticed was that when I put it together, people always ask, like, oh, as they say in my lovely language, guy, how far? Are you? <laughs> like, you're look. looking on point. And it's only when you now start to educate people that it's not people, some people wear, Prim um, wear Armani and look like Primark. Like some people can package Primark well, okay. except on how you present exactly. it. So very much creative background. Creative. So basically it started from you obviously being creative and yeah. being able to put the look together and that's how you've gone to expand, okay. But now the thing for me is why suits? I mean, it could have been anything. You know, people go into designing for yeah. different reasons. Yeah. Some because they're creative, some because they love fashion and stuff like that. Why did you decide, you know what, I wanted to do suits? One, it's easier than women's wear. Because okay. women, women's wear, and you would know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but, we're, but our stuff is more fun, though. Come on. No, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, let me quickly jump off that, really respond to that. <laughs> women's wear is, it's an art. Oh, yeah. It's fabric. Just it's, like us. You know what? This is for my wife. Um, if I get in trouble. <laughs> women's wear is art. It's fabric. It's shapes. It's um, personality. And... The moment I, I give a lot of respect to female designers because the moment you can combine all that and then, then make it define itself on a woman, it's, well, men's, we're not in a rude way. It's very boxy. Let's be honest here. It's very much two hands. You can't have three hands. Okay. Um, it has to have three. So there's a structure we work with. Okay. Well, women's where it's an art I'm still learning. Learn. Okay. And hopefully when I graduate yeah. from the okay. art, I would love to explore that. But for suits, I felt um, I didn't like what was out there. Okay. Um, there are a lot of designers, and if I did mention their names, it might not say, it might not sit well. Okay. But um, from looking at book, my inspirations, one of them, um, Mr. Tom Ford, um, he's literally set the bar for me on what suits should sure. be and how designers should be. And the second person, 
um, His Majesty um, Prince Charles, okay. um, which people won't believe. And I love the way he makes double-breasted suits, and which has been a lot of my inspiration Fashion. with double-breasted. And for me, I just wanted to look for a way I can define people, but yet not make it a uniform. Because that's okay. what suits started to become. Okay. And that's literally how I, I stepped into it. Okay. And also, we noticed, not we noticed, but your brand is based around groom slash evening sort of look. Do you have the everyday casual, you know, like with the whole just simple blazer and stuff like that? Does that include it in your collection? Tell us what the ranges of your collection, your collection are. Is. Okay. My brand, I, I noticed that, um, and not in a rude way, um, customers like to be educated you almost not in a rude way you almost need to tell a customer this is black no this is green um this is that really be that specific yeah. and i noticed that when i had an open market i used to get the same questions also do you do for grooms or do you do for this and it in a polite way almost frustrated me yeah. so i said okay let me approach a niche my niche is grooms wear and men's wear still men's wear as a whole okay. but just defining Funny. um grooms because i feel it's a day in their lives that no one can take away and if I'm part of that day, hey, it lasts a lifetime. A um, dinners, because um, there's a whole thing of Mr. Bond. And it's just that whole thing where you walk in a room and you don't have to say much. And, you know, you walk and say, it is in the detail. It is looking really sexy. And it's just very much that oomph to it. So I literally go for everything. Because um, I even do jeans. Um, bespoke I didn't jeans. know that. No, that's fairly new. So I apologize. Okay, no, no, so no. Because I know you guys so have done your homework. that's just coming up, yeah? Okay, cool. Exclusive. <laughs> I always like to catch the exclusive just so they know they heard it here first, guys. Exclusive, right? Okay, yes. All right. Okay. So, okay. So that means you're going more into the casual, casual side of things. Okay. All right. So with the suits, how has the journey been so far? Because I know it's not easy. Like... We were discussing earlier on, being a designer is like a job and a half and more and, you know, everything that comes with it. How has the journey been so far? It's been a learning curve and I've been trying to find my voice all the way through. Um, I've been doing this for close to six to seven years. Okay. And within the six to seven years, I've come up with different names. Um, I had a period where I was very, sorry for saying this, part of the people. So I almost used the FUBU blueprint, which is for us and by us. And okay. it was almost like... I'm designing suits only for my own people. Okay. And then my people educated me, saying that oh, you're wasting your time. We will send you back to the market, okay. and it was an eye opener. So I went from um, individual collections, individual fashion, which is individual. You see it, you like okay. it, that that. And then individual by K. And I think when I fully understood my market and my brand, was when I then got confident enough to then say, you know what? Okay. As Beyonce said, you put the ring on it. I put my name on it, and it became K. Yeah, London. London. Okay. And kept care of the African way, as in Ami it's Saleh, Ami Saleh. Yeah, it's got this ah, it's got the <laughs> So you can still feel like, obviously, that's still the culture that you still represent. So with your suit, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're quite... I feel like when you see them, you almost see like there's a hat. Like, you know, when you, when you create an, a masterpiece, it's like a hat. You see it and then you're like, oh you put so much work into this. Please chop <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you put so much work into it. I just want to know what is the process like from the designing stage mm -hmm. to the you know manufacturing stage and you to know all of piece. that because I know it's 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 a journey. Um, so okay, what I tend to do or what I start off with is my consultation is very very important. Okay. My consultation, which is where, um, as I said earlier, my degree side of things come into, which is a bit of human psychology. So I meet clients. Clients will come and say. I want a suit and I want to look like Mr. Beckham. Everyone seems to want to look like Beckham. Beckham first and, and then James Bond James. second. Okay. And they show me a picture. I like this suit and David Beckham. And I look at the gentleman and go, okay, you are three times his size. Um, you don't look like him, but hey. Um, and then you then have the <laughs> consultation, but you, don't, you need to be sense of people's. Yeah. And then by the time you now sit with the person, you show them fabrics. By the time you meet them, which is away from their words, you listen to what they're really saying. You then get, start to consult them and you know what? This color goes to your skin tone. This cut would work with you. Yeah. So by the end of a consultation, they come in want to be like Beckham and they leave with the idea of they're going to amplify them because I'm dressing you. you, not Beckham, okay. not anyone else. All right. So it's not just about you just creating a look that they want. It's more about you actually, Amplifying. like you said, educating them and letting them know, okay, this is what would work that's for it. you. So that's like, for me, that's like a totally different service. It's like almost like a personal, um, what you call, you know, uh, shop a exactly, shopper and that is, and that's you it. basically give them a look and some like you said some people don't even know what they want no. they just know i want their suits and 
you make that happen for because them. they've seen someone else wear it i want it <laughs> yeah, i'm very sure when i get off the show the conversation is gonna be so did you make that suit <laughs> um no i don't do women's wear can you make it for me <laughs> okay for you Which I will. you're going to get into with the women's wear an inspiration right there so you yes. don't do the women's wear Not and yet. right now we're on the men's but are you looking into um going into that soon Women's designers, I wish I could get up and just really bow because okay. it's art. I respect you. Um, women's wear, I don't think I'll flirt that much into it. Okay. I might go with blazers, um, the jeans collection, um, which already is going to go live from March, March. Okay. is very much going to be jeans for women. And of course, that was inspired by Apple Bottom. Okay. Um, that was inspired very much by the issue of sisters feeling um, they don't have anything that complements their okay. kids. Okay. Um, and also because I hate when I walk behind someone wearing jeans and I just feel so cheated off. Sorry, my, forgive my language. So I go back to the whole art form of, which is which also shows in my pieces. It's looking for a way in which I can use fashion to amplify the person. Okay. Okay. That's really my key belief okay. in fashion. So we can expect women's collection from the jeans. Jeans and blazers. Okay, and I also wanted to give you an inspiration. That's okay. why I wore this. Guys, if you can see this. I know you don't do for women, mm -hmm. but I can help you maybe on that side. We can design some cute outfit. You know how you can go to the office looking all sexy and then from there goes to dinner? That's why I wore this suit because I wanted to give you an inspiration. That. And I hope I've managed to inspire you. You have because I, um, <laughs> let me actually say it on camera. I, when you walked in, I said, okay, you are wearing that suit. And I, it, it almost okay. goes back to the <laughs> comment. If someone says, nice suit, they're complimenting the suit. Okay. Where if someone says, you're wearing that suit, they compliment you. Where can I? You. There you okay. go. So you are wearing that suit and Thank it is you. it is a great piece. Really? Um, it looks a very 80s complemented with a Victorian touch, which is what you have at the very top of the lapel. Right. The buttons come in, which is very much um, what you had with um, very much the 60s, where you had your um, capers and things yeah, like and that. that yeah. And then the detail of it really much gives you a very Victorian inspired, which is what goes at the bottom. So, I understand women's wear. You just wear, even explain my look to me. So, I think we might have to look for, you know, inspiration for this. We, we, we can go into that. We, we, we can, can talk collaboration that. about that. Yeah, please. Yeah, we can, we can, have can that talk Kaya and Godiva. Kaya inspired by Godiva. That's or Godiva it, guys. for Kaya London. Guys, did you hear that? I, it's coming, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. It's coming. And then we were just talking earlier on. Like, apart from the consultation, the big spell, do you have ready to make? Order as well not yet what um at the moment that takes a lot of capital that's okay. that's the honest truth what i'm going to be doing towards the end of the year is have some specific pieces so almost like collections like this okay. um have them mainly on the website and you can okay. have them as specific it's cheeky i'm being cheeky okay. which very much i like this design i want this a specific okay. thing so okay. it's well, we bespoke made for your for measurement, your measurement but specifically but that. But you already had the design. Exactly. Yeah. So rather than that have the consultation, you want it, let's just get it that okay, way. Okay, cool. And t-shirts. When jeans arrive in March, t-shirts, which would be ready to wear, sorry, okay. continue to bring point, should be able to be here in time. About the jeans, are they going to be ready to the wear? The jeans are all bespoke Coast because Coast. I needed to Coast. really, I want a sister to wear my jeans. I think I have to get one of those get, because... Please. I feel like my, my, my figure would work very well. Complimented very well. Yeah, yes. Very well. That's, that's very much So it. yeah, that's it. Is there anything else you'd like to add very quickly before we round this up? Yes. Um, one last thing. And I please say this out to everybody. Um, the principles of fashionistas. I'm not big on fashionistas because I don't think everyone is a fashionista. Um, but I say one really honest principle for everyone. The moment you can dress the mind, the body takes shape. And that's my biggest principle in fashion. Wow, that's very good. But based off of that, do you think I'm a fashionista? And I'm going to put you on the blast and see. I think you're someone who appreciates fashion. Okay. I think you're someone who understands fashion. Okay. And I think you're someone who rocks it really well. Okay. Because the tag fashionista <laughs> sometimes means trying too hard. And I don't okay. think you do that. Oh. So that's the reason oh I use God. it that way. Okay. You've done your so research, isn't it? So you're more of a fashion influencer. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's a new word, guys. I'm a fashion influencer. I love that. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure it's having you on the show. Thank you so much, and we'll be sure to keep in touch, right? Thank you. So, guys, this is it for this segment of the show. Make sure you stay tuned because we have more coming up on the show. Hello, my name is Kaya from Kaya London, and this is my 60 Seconds from Go Diva Fab Show. Now, when it comes to fashion, 
all of us wear what's in trends. And I think that's wrong. I think fashion is personal. Fashion is something that defines you. Fashion is an extension of you. And fashion is what makes you hot, sexy. We don't talk about that anymore because we get lost in the clothes. So here's my biggest principle, biggest rule to fashion. Look for colors that complement you. Look for things that amplify you. But most importantly, when you dress the mind, the body takes shape. I guess that's my 60 seconds. So I'll tell you this, you need to fall in love with you before anyone else can fall in love with you. And that's fashion. And that's my 60 seconds. Right here on Go Diva Fab Show. Hi guys, welcome to another segment of the Fashion Fab with myself, Go Diva. And Mr. Kizzy. AKA Plush Star. <laughs> now you have to put my brand. I in. have to. We have to. Come on. It's all about the Plush Stars. And that's what we represent here on the Godiva Fab Show. You always have to be Plush That's star. absolutely yeah. correct. So, on today's um, episode, what are we talking about? Because I feel like this is like your thing. You're even like demonstrating everything right now, you know? <laughs> so, I think people can already guess what we're going to be talking about. What are we going to be talking about? Yeah, what we're going to be talking about today is denim. denim. Denim, the classic wear. You know, why is it a classic wear? I mean, denim is almost something that I feel has been around since I was born. Like, I think I can remember it as far as something that, again, is like international. I feel like almost everywhere you can everywhere. find denim. It's like a, a thing that's just worldwide for Absolutely. Me. Anywhere you go, any closer you go, you find denim. How did it originate? Where did it come about from? It came from a word, a French word called Serge Denims. That's did you say war? A word. A word. A word. Yeah, word. A French word. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, thought that I wanted to learn that because I wasn't sure what that was. I thought that was like a new thing. No, it's you know not. I mean? just, I'm always trying to learn new it, things. It came so. from a French word um, called Serge Denims, and that was how it evolved into. Uh, that was, it was in Genoa, Italy, that it, you know, and it was used as a. Uh, denim was produced then as a workwear for the sailors back in the days. So that was wow. the origination. Yeah origination did sorry you know, of... i did not know that well you learn every day i did not know that like i mean obviously you must have really dig deep like I'm, to I, find I mean, out I, a, where did this i'm come a denim from. person so i oh, love yeah, denim 100%, it does. so i have to the like find out denim on denim thing which sometimes can be <laughs> like, just leave it anyway like if infiltrated the streets and evolved all the way from there and now it's like a classic where everyone on the street is wearing denim yeah Anywhere I feel like the look. good thing about this is that you almost can find at least even the most, uh, you know me I always say, because there's, there's levels to fashions, right? Yeah. But I feel like even the most plain person or the most advanced person in fashion almost certainly have a piece of denim in their wardrobe. I feel I, like I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it's just something it's, you have. It's, it's a piece that you can't do without it. And that's why it's so important. In this in the fashion industry it's a very huge fashion statement and there are different types of them we want to talk about the types of denim okay yeah there are there are different types there's the stone wash which is uh you know the classic stone wash it's dry hard rugged look you know that's that's one type and then there's the waxed type which is like the polished ones you know they are like yeah. sometimes very most times it comes in black like, yeah yeah and it's i think polished. those ones sometimes i kind of mistake them because i'm like are they denim are they not denim are they jeans what are they i always feel like they sometimes are, they are they're denim. like they are what denim are they? Well, different dif a different, different type of, type of denim okay. Yeah, and then there's the stretch one. I know all you ladies love the stretch yeah. denim. You know, it we, brings out yes, your face. Yes, I concur to that because, <laughs> you know, like if you're trying to get your jeans, like, I mean, if it's not like, you know, sometimes you have to be careful with jeans. Like, yeah. you don't want to go a size up because you don't want to feel like you've put away. So sometimes it's the stretchy good. one yeah, the stretch are one always is... good and it makes you feel like you're still the same size and mm -hmm. you don't have to go a size up. <laughs> That's the trick, ladies, yeah. And then after that one, we have uh, the dry denim. I think the dry denim is basically... I think the the older generation actually love that one okay. because it's the it's it has this dull color to it like it's not like um I don't know how to put the particular word it's 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 more of an old fashioned fashion. kind of jeans okay. yeah like a, and it's the uh, look of it and that's yeah, how exactly, it feels, okay? exactly exactly so right. those are the types of denim and then we we are also going to talk about the combinations and how to combine them how you look in the denim I mean, combination is key. I feel like as much as, like we always say, as much as you have a piece, a piece can work in your favor. And sometimes you might not really get 
the, the, the beauty of the piece if it's not combined well. So you always have to combine a piece in order for you to really achieve the look and for you to really love it and be like, wow. Because sometimes you don't really get, you know, the goodness of a feel until you actually combine it with combine something it with and you're something like, else. wow, that is banging. So what's so, your favorite combination of a jean? You know what? I want to say denim on denim. I would say oh, that. The okay. reason why I would say that is, is it because, because I'm wearing denim on denim. You're always wearing <laughs> denim on denim, so I'm almost I love like denim. don't have a choice. I mean, I love denim Guys, a lot. Every time I'm with this man, oh, come he is on. wearing denim on denim and on denim as well. Like, have you seen that one? <laughs> oh, come like, on. Like no. denim. But well, yeah. I love my denim. Yeah, you love his denim. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I feel like denim on denim is like obviously that's something that's been around for time. Yeah. I'm not really. I don't think it's something I do particularly. But I think if I was to do denim on denim, I wouldn't do the whole fitted denim in that denim top and stuff like that. I think I'll do like maybe the big denim top or okay. jacket. Yeah. And then I'll do it with like a skinny jeans oh, or something that's, like that's, that. That's quite yeah. That's how I would do my denim on denim. That's yeah. quite that's that's quite nice. I, I also love uh, when you combine denim with like maybe the, for that casual look of like a suit, a t shirt, you know, different kind of looks. Yeah, as long as you have one piece of it, it, you can just play with any other thing. These days, people wear traditional attire and put a denim on it. I know, like, yeah, if you wear like a... Straight. Yeah, like, I think the other day I was wearing a high-waisted denim and I had a crop top, which was African print. I mean, so I thought that with was... this top you're wearing, if you even put a denim on it... I could wear a denim, lovely. but today I'm, like, rocking the sexy suit. <laughs> I didn't want to do the denim because <coughs> he took both of the denim for her. So he was already doing denim on denim. Okay, so this, this denim top is for I you. I wasn't this one planning to do it then. You should have given me the denim top now. Uh, don't worry, we can is exchange it, too late? it backstage. Don't okay, worry. yeah. We'll come back with the denim. <laughs> anyway, I thought before we even close this segment, I thought we should like highlight the difference between denim and jeans. A lot of people wouldn't actually know the what the difference is. Denim. Some people would think denim is jeans and some people think jeans is denim. It's the same thing, but there's a little difference Friends. there. Okay. Yeah. So what well, I say, denim is the material, is the fabric, and so jeans. So without it being into when you said the fabric, so that's just mean coming off of the market, just the material. Yes, there. denim is that's the fabric, the denim. but okay. jeans is what is made out of the denim. Mm. So your jacket, what is it? My jacket, as it is now, yeah. is made is a jean jacket. Okay. And your trousers it's are a jean, jean jacket. jacket. But, the but if fabric, they were in the raw form and they haven't been made, that's the denim. Jean. Yeah. Denim. 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 I'm confused. I have to learn this back then. It's too much. <laughs> I just call it denim. I'm wearing denim. No, like, no, that is just, it's a safe that. way yeah. to say it. Say denim. 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 Yeah. denim. denim. So, it can denim. Still, so basically, once it's made, you can still call it denim. You can still call it denim. Exactly. You can't call it jeans unless it's made into Unless nothing. it's made. Exactly. Bam. I think I just... I got that. Thank you for that. So, guys, this is it for this segment of the show. As always, you know, you can always find out more information about this segment and the show as a whole. And also keep in tune next time because we have more, more topic to more talk juicy, about. You juicy know? stuff. You don't want to miss all of that. So, yeah, guys, make sure you stay tuned because we have more coming up on the show. All right. Take care. See you next time. Our star icon for the week is Jadena. Jadena is a rapper, singer and songwriter. We know him as the classic man and the man who brings Africa to the world through his style of dressing and music too. Since inception, it defines style, swag, but most of all, standing proud and representing where you are from, no matter where you are. And for this reason, Jadena is our star icon for the week. And that's it, guys, for this episode of the Good Evil Fab Show. As always, it's been a pleasure having you guys here. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you want more of the fabulosity, make sure you tune in next time. I want to say a very big thank you to our special guests for stopping by and making me rock one of their pieces, which I absolutely love and cannot wait to get my hands on the latest one. And also to my team for always keeping it together. As always, it's been a pleasure. Until next time, stay fabulous. <laughs>